Hi, I'm Tom Fenn. I studied law. I'm 25 years old and I've got a huge passion for the environment and kind of giving back where we can and how we can with what we've got. I'm Brittany Oberholzer, I'm 24 years old and I'm currently finishing law school. Um, I love living life and, and seeing what the world has to offer and exploring the country and being outdoors and just getting new hobbies and things to entertain myself with. Me and Tom are the co-founders of Dunkeld Honey and it's here in Dahlstrom, South Africa and we started about a year and a half ago um, during COVID and yeah, it's turned into quite a good project and hobby of ours. Yeah, so essentially it all started, we had a sort of interest in beekeeping and whatnot, we were just more curious and then we actually watched a carte blanche episode where they were talking about saffron and whatnot, so we thought, well, what can we do to provide a purpose? And we both had that passion and then when we heard about Morgan Freeman's bee farm, we kind of thought, well, you know, we've got the space, let's do something with it. So essentially it started, you know, we bought one hive, we got excited, it got full, and then we just thought from then it was history. And now we're up to 70 hives and yeah, we've done our first harvest, which is very, very exciting and it becomes addictive really. You just get into it and it's a nice escape from Joburg to just come and be outdoors and feel that you're providing back to the world a bit. In the beginning it was quite difficult because obviously you have the stream and you want to produce honey and you want to help the bees but you don't actually know what goes into it. So you hop onto YouTube and you start doing your research and whatnot and uh, Tom did a lot of Facebook marketplace to try and find hives there and there and there. And what it takes is you go in the middle of the night when the, hi and the bees are less active, you go and you wrap up these hives, hope that they're not going to sting you, you put them on a trailer and you drive them to the final location which is the Andalstrom, um, which you all have to do before the sun comes up. So it's quite an experience and I mean moving 70 hives, just us two, um, we soon realised that you know what, we're going to need more hands and it was so nice to get some of the locals involved, um, some of the staff here and it's amazing to see how excited people get, like once you get started and you see the process, which Tom can explain a bit more about. Um, it's physically in your hands and it's like you see from the jar to the, like from the hive to the jar and it's, it's an amazing experience. Yeah, so the special part, as Britt said, you know, getting the locals involved and whatnot. Kind of in the past what they would do is the guys see the bees and they don't know how to handle them or anything like that. So they would go and unfortunately they would kill them or do something to have to remove them. So then we came in and we said, guys, these things aren't here to harm you. There is a way that we can, you know, do it. So now these guys absolutely love it. The locals come in, they find the hive and they remove it, they put it at our bee plot. And yeah, and they give back in that sort of way and it's just helped so much. You know, they love it, we love that they love it and just watching them do it, it's so impressive how far they've come and you know, kind of the progress that they've made just through the short time that we've had. Well, it all starts with the tedious job of opening every single hive. You know, you smoke them to sort of calm them down a little bit. And then you go through frame by frame by frame by frame and you take the beetles out and you see that the, the bees are safe and they've made their sort of first part, which is called brood, where the queen lays her egg. From there, you put another block on top, which is where the honey is made. And that's kind of what we take you know, when it's time to harvest, when the bees have prepared it, we will then take that, move it to our um, extraction plot, and we will cut up the wax and sort of spin the honey out from there. And obviously, because it's so hands-on, you know, I've always got Brit with me, we lifting things, and we kind of share the carrying the hives, because they you know, can get up to 40 kgs at times. You know, so it's quite a, quite a hands-on job. It's manual labour, let me tell you that. You are exhausted after a day of beekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> Once we've spun it out, um, the honey starts to drip through a machine and we basically filter it. And it goes through three filtering processes. Obviously, that's up to you, depending on how fine you want the honey. Um, but everything that we do is completely, like, we use pure practices. We don't heat it above any temperature. Um, so it really is organic and 100% honey. Um, so you filter it through three different filters and it just gets more and more fine and it's just a beautiful and mesmerizing process to watch. A sticky situation but it's good fun. And the whole idea essentially is our goal is take the honey from the hive to the jar. There's no funny 
syrups or sugars or any heating, nothing to make the process easier. It's pure, pure, pure honey. So what makes us different to all the other beekeepers, I don't want to take anything away from them, but ours is purely about the bees. We're not here for any financial gain, we're not here for any purpose apart from preserving the honeybee population and trying to repopulate the dying population that we rely on so heavily as people. You know, even the jars that we sell, from that we will always try and use that money to put back into bees, putting more hives on people's farms or just doing everything we can to preserve the bee population. And with that, just obviously also training the locals to love bees like we do to preserve them further. So basically what we've learned from this entire experience is you can take on a project that you have absolutely nothing, you know nothing about and you can just have a love for the end product and what you can create and it's so fascinating to realize what that process takes and it teaches you as a person to start from scratch, know nothing and build and build and build and it's so nice and I think what's nice for people out there is they can come on this journey with us and start from scratch as well and learn how to make their own honey from the bottom up. And I think it's very special um, and it's something that families can share, we share together and oh, it's just such an amazing experience. Yeah, and you see the kids come and they watch us do our process and they've just got these grins like you can't believe. And they start asking the questions and then we start grinning because we're so excited to answer them. Yeah. So it's just a community based around the brand. It's a learning process to make a difference. So right now we currently, as I said, we farm here in Dahlstrom and it's such a nice community where everyone helps each other and if you want to check out our honey, it's currently at Dunkeld Country Estate um, in their daily, so please go and grab yourself a jar, I promise you won't regret it. And we hope to expand um, out into different towns, small towns and big towns, inclusive of everyone who wants to get involved. So jumping onto that, our goal is to obviously grow our little business to give back a little bit more and we can only do it with the help of the community. So with that, we've obviously made our Instagram page and we would love for people to follow and watch our journey and grow with us. And it's just an exciting thing, you know, we've got a few initiatives around the corner which we hope you will jump right on to. It's exciting stuff and you'll only see it from our Instagram page. So please join us on our little journey.